Uh, yes. Uh, so Cloud Cookie Land was uh, an independent film. We financed it uh, through a series of investors, private investors. Uh, the Film Council turned us down several times. Um, and we looked for money from the States unsuccessfully, so we made it using UK-based finance. We built a team of uh, technicians and uh, other people who, most of whom had not made a feature film before. So they were people from television who were keen to get the experience of, being in a, of working on a movie. And we cast it uh, mostly through contacts that we had within the industry and people we'd seen putting in performances in other low budget films. And so we, uh, we wrote the script ourselves and we shot it in 32 shooting days and it took um, six months of post-production to complete it. Right. Um, so what's the, what's the premise of the... Uh, the premise of Cloud Cuckoo Land is a story about a very disabled character who is called Sandy in the film, who has a dream to fly. And he lives in a care home, and he is um, a wheelchair user who has serious problems of mobility and speech. And this was inspired by the real-life story of uh, Steve Varden, who actually starred in the film. So it was based on, inspired by um, events from his life. And he is, indeed, has cerebral palsy and has um, successfully trained as a hang glider pilot. So, so that was the premise of the film. Gosh, hang glider pilot. Um, so it sounds like a lot of hard work went into those uh, days of shooting. Are you happy with the result? I'm extremely happy with the result. We, you know, visually we came out with a really, you know, a, uh, I think a, a, a quite a respectable film. It's, uh, we shot it on 35mm and so it's, you know, a big widescreen cinema, cinema uh, format and we put a lot of work into the sound production and I think we, you know, we came out with a, a low budget film that uh, we could certainly be proud of. When it came to the story, we made some, some serious mistakes, I think, we, because we weren't experienced enough at screenwriting. We let ourselves get distracted away from the main story. We should have developed the main story more. And we had too many characters, we had too many subplots, and it, uh, it made a result that was, in the end, not as clear as it should have been. Okay, well, it's, um, it's quite an unusual title, what, mm. uh, what inspired the, the name. We were looking for a title that had an element of like fantasy, and like Cloud Cuckoo Land is a place which you can believe in, but it doesn't really exist. And so that was where it came from. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Um, so what are the issues affecting getting it distributed uh, currently? The issues affecting getting it distributed are primarily that the, the film is seen by distributors as being not a potential popular success. <laughs> distributors are very hard business people. They look at film in the same way that, uh, say, supermarket buyers look at uh, bananas and potatoes. They want a particular type of product, they, um, uh, they know their own audiences, and they want to put films in cinemas that put the maximum number of bums on seats. And so if you've got a small-scale film, a niche film, uh, unless it gets incredible publicity or gets an Oscar nomination, the chances of it getting a real distribution are very low. So are you, are you confident it will get distributed sometime soon? Yes, yeah, I think it will. I'm sure it will get distributed because the sales agent really believes in it, which is very good news. So we've got a sales agent that's actually spent the last few years working on getting the film seen. And I think they will succeed, and we, we believe that it's imminent in the United States. So uh, maybe even in February of next year, the film will be distributed in the States. That's excellent. Um, so what kind of struggles do independent filmmakers have to face in today's industry? The, the first problem, I think, is, is really the biggest problem of all is to find the money for the project, you know. Uh, and the key to, to it all is to having a script that, that is actually developed enough to, to find serious finance. And that's where the problem comes. There's too many people with um, half-baked scripts, as we were indeed when we set out to make Cloud Cuckoo Land, to be perfectly frank. Um, too many people with scripts that haven't had enough development and those scripts uh, will never make great films. They'll make even possibly good films but not great ones. So I think the main problem with the, the, the British film industry, if you can put your finger on a single thing, is to say that there's not enough attention and focus on screenwriting as an art uh, to enable a new generation of, of filmmakers to come up making really successful films. Um, and have you always wanted to go into the film industry, or is it something you have? I always wanted to go into, I started in television and I always loved making television uh, productions, but 
I've always equally loved cinema, and I reached a point in my career where I wanted to start to make cinema films. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favourite uh, director? Well, kind of I'd awesome. certainly say that Stanley Kubrick would be up there as a director that's tried many different types of genre. You know, he's made thrillers, he's made war films, he's made, you know, psychological films. He's, he's a really interesting filmmaker who refused to be sort of pigeonholed, I think. You know, he's made epics. And, you know, if you look at his career, he's made just about every type of film, which yeah. is really, really admirable. Uh, so he, he bucked the trend and he, he, you know, he was a sort of street fighter, I think, in, in, as a film director. Yeah, I like his films well. Okay, so um, you've worked in both television and film, so we should feel more at home. And... Well, certainly I'm more excited at the moment to work in cinema because with cinema, if you get it right, you can reach a global audience, whereas in uh, television it's always you know, limited to, on a, to a small audience. So with cinema, if you get a really big success you know, at, um, you know, with a theatrical release, it can, be, it can have a, a massive impact. Uh, right, so you've, um, you've claimed Everest, uh, Everest North Face, um, one of the most technically demanding climbs amid the harshest condi conditions ever experienced in that region. Uh, so could you please tell the readers what, uh, what made you want to undertake such a ascent? <laughs> well, that was, the Everest film was a film for Channel 4 and National Geographic, and it was a 50-minute documentary. And we went there with a small team of eight people to, to shoot the film. Three months on location. And the mission was to make a film about Brian Blessed, the actor, reaching the summit, which sadly he didn't do. So the film uh, didn't achieve its ultimate objective, but we did get the camera to the summit and we filmed uh, a good summit sequence, even though Brian didn't make it. And, uh, and finally, do you have any advice for the budding filmmakers of Ragged College? My advice would be that um, a great concept is the way to start. Come up with a, a passion that's something that you really uh, believe in, find something about your own world that you, that you particularly love. And that could be something that's a hobby, or something to do with the way you dress, or something to do with the friends you hang out with, or the films you watch, or the type of dance that you like to get involved with. It can be any type of passion, but I think any, my main advice would be find that passion and develop it into a project. And if you can do that, then you know, there'll, there'll always be people who want to watch it. Thank you very much. This has been really good. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.